Nothing is more frustrating than watching one of your group members fall to a boss mechanic. And that's why, more often than not, classes who possess a battle resurrection are popular in Mythic Plus. Well, most of them. Sorry, Red Paladins. The Death Knight, Warlock, Druid, and Paladin all have battle resurrections in their toolkit. But what if I told you there was a way for every class to have access to a battle res? Today in this video, I want to go over how you can gain access to this powerful item that will allow you to revive your allies while in combat and how to minimize the risks that are involved. Per usual, I will have timestamps below so you can skip around if you'd like. Let's dive in. Now, it's common knowledge that the engineering profession has always granted players access to a battle res since Battle for Azeroth, but for the first time ever, engineering isn't a required profession to have access to it, though I do highly recommend it and I'll get to that in a bit. Now, every armor specialization has access to a helm, which does require engineering, but there are bracers that do not. Plate wares, we have access to the difficult wrist protectors. Mail wares have the complicated cuffs. Leather wares have needlessly complex wrist guards. And cloth wares have the over-engineered sleeve extenders. You can tell which items are engineering, since they have a tinker socket. The reason I'm going to focus on the bracers instead of the helm is because 1. The helms do require engineering profession, and 2. They compete with a tier slot, so with the catalyst being opened up two weeks ago now, there really isn't a reason to use the helm unless you know that your class doesn't need the tier helm. Both of these items are unique because instead of having two equal secondary stats like most crafted items, these engineering items will actually put all of those secondary stats into one, which for some classes is really strong, especially for tanks who favor something like haste or versatility. Lastly, tinker sockets are going to be what allows us to actually have a battle res. Unlike normal gems that give you secondary stats, you'll be using a Tinker Socket, and you can place orders for them here. While there are a ton of to choose from, we are mostly going to be focused on the Arclight Vital Correctors. This effect reads, Carelessly cross a few frayed wires within the vicinity of a fallen ally in a desperate attempt to jolt them back to life with 60% health and 20% mana. Castable in combat, what could possibly go wrong? Now, this is where having engineering or not will make a fairly large impact. These bracers can fail, and honestly, pretty consistently. But there is a pretty easy way to reduce that chance. If you decide not to level engineering at all, but still want access to this item, I personally recommend crafting the bracers with the optional reagent critical failure prevention unit. This means that when you're trying to battle res and fall an ally, it's never going to backfire and kill you. But we're going to be able to avoid this altogether if we level engineering a bit. Picking up a profession and leveling it doesn't take much outside of a little bit of time and capital. I'm not sure what prices are going to look like on EU servers since I play on the uh, North American servers, but it cost me about 10,000 gold to level, which I don't think is too much of an investment. If you're strapped for cash, you can either farm the materials yourself or pick up enchanting so you can disenchant all your dungeon items so you can get those resonant crystals for some quick cash on the auction house. Let's walk through how this is going to work. The main thing we're actually focused on is our specialization points, and the reason for that is because this will reduce the failure rate significantly and prevent the item from critically failing, which ultimately can save a dungeon run. Our main objective is to unlock 40 specialization points, and we want to hit these four nodes. First, we need 10 points in Mechanical Mind so we can unlock a sub-specialization. Then we need to get an additional 30 points into Inventions, and this is because of a few things. First, your Tinkers will no longer catastrophically malfunction. That's super beneficial now since you don't need to add this to the recipe and instead focus on something else. Next, we can get two separate nodes that reduce the Mayhem component of the Tinker use. I do want to mention you can go beyond 40 Specialization Points and further reduce this, but I found this is the best kind of base strategy. The term Mayhem encompasses the chances that you're either going to get knocked back, polymorphed, or have a damage over time effect applied to you. There are a few ways you can actually get to 40 specialization points. Whether it's from simply leveling the profession, I recommend trying to make all of the base first time crafts, which is a total of 27 spec points. Now you can go and quickly collect two of the engineering treasures, and both of those can be found in the Waking Shores. First can be found here, just west of the Flashfire Assault. You can unlock this treasure by interacting with this pylon and then clicking on these three bomb looking things around the ground. Next, we can fly due north to the Concord Observatory. Once inside the main building, you can interact with this recipe on the floor, which will allow you to collect the materials for a rocket. First, we grab the ash on the floor here. Sadly, it doesn't light up, so it's kind of hard to notice. Once we have that, we can head across the courtyard to the other building and grab the rest of the materials, which conveniently enough do glow. 
At this point, you'll notice that the rocket will be in the same place where the recipe was, and this will give you another three skill points. Then if you have enough reputation with the Artisan's Consortium, you can then go pick up a free 10 points from Rabul in Valdraken. This will get us to 40 points that we need, but just in case you need additional skill points, you can always partake in the weekly quests or other ways to gain one-time spec points. Let's sink our 40 points into our spec tree and check it off our to-do list. Now, making the bracers is going to be the easiest part, and I personally recommend looking in trade chat for a crafter who can guarantee a rank 5 item, but for convenience sake, I'm just going to list this as a public order. Now, of course, there are risks involved with this, meaning that the quality of the item might be lower than what you want. And, of course, sadly, I only received a rank 3 bracers, which means I will be losing out on a little bit of item level, but that's okay because I do plan on upgrading these in the future to a much higher item level, and I already have a crafter set for that. Next, we need to do the same thing, but with the Tinker Socket. You can try to get a rank 3, but I've only ever used rank 2 sockets, and honestly, I haven't really noticed any issues. So I'm just going to go and public order this as well. And now once we have both of our items, this item can be placed on our bar, and now we'll revitalize a fallen ally. I want to spend a little time talking about the pros and cons, and what classes I think should actually use these items. First things first, they aren't perfect. I personally haven't had them fail on me once though since I've leveled engineering, but I know there can be some frustrations if you don't level engineering at all, but having access to a battle res can save a key, especially on tyrannical weeks. I personally think most DPS classes should try to have access to these if you're really serious about keys, but I think they're going to actually end up being best on rogues since they have abilities like evasion or cloak of shadows that they can basically immune themselves to damage while they revive their ally. This item also has like a 3 second cast time which can definitely suck and make it difficult for a tank to actually get a res off without a perfect window of opportunity. Though on the plus side, I do really like these bracers, simply because they don't use an embellishment slot, which means that you can wear them regardless, and with how much secondary sets they grant, more often than not they will benefit you even if you're not using a battle res. I do highly suggest level engineering though as long as you aren't super committed to two professions already. Most of my Mythic Plus characters have enchanting and engineering as their two professions for both gold making and obviously for this battle res, where my alternate characters are the ones who are doing the professions for gold, like my mage who is specialized in jewel crafting and mining. Anyways, that's really it folks, I just wanted to make this video super short, and if you ended up learning something from this video, feel free to hit that like button. I do stream all levels of keys on Twitch, so check me out there. And if you have any questions or any comments, leave them in the comment section below. I also will leave some wowhead links if you have any more questions on the topic. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.